Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and well, we've got an eventful Friday from a headline news perspective, at least. We've got a Tesla fire to talk about, a lawsuit against Tesla to talk about. Market share continues to make the rounds today, but we do have some news on Tesla insurance, more news on India, and a couple other stories as well. Considering those headlines for Tesla, not a bad day for the stock today, finishing down 0.8% to $693.73. That compared to the NASDAQ down six tenths of a percent. All right, so first up today, let's talk about that fire. Last night, a fire broke out at Fremont. Local news station KTVU got some aerial footage of the smoke and is pretty clearly coming from the location of the Gigapress casting machine. The Fremont Fire Department said that firefighters responded to a fire at the Tesla factory at 4.27 p.m. The fire was located in an area of the factory that is currently under construction. They say that the deep-seated fire was contained to a vehicle manufacturing stamping machine. Of course, there they probably mean the casting machine. They continue on to say that Fremont firefighters coordinated the firefighting effort with the Tesla fire response team and that the fire had been controlled. Quote, the cause of the fire is molten aluminum and hydraulic fluid. Hydraulic fluid was identified as the source of the fire. End quote. Thankfully, there were no reported injuries, and Fremont Fire again says that all Fremont Fire crews were released from the incident at the Tesla factory by 7 p.m., which would be under three hours from when they first responded. So by all accounts, this seems like a problem with the hydraulic line rather than a problem with the casting machine itself or how Tesla is handling the process. So it should be something that's relatively easy to fix without a lot of downtime. And most importantly, it doesn't sound like anything that would be inherent to the casting process going forward that could be a rate limiting factor. The other big headline generator today was a lawsuit that has been filed against Elon Musk and the Tesla board of directors, claiming that Elon Musk's quote unquote erratic tweets have exposed Tesla and its shareholders to billions of dollars of liability. Now, the most important thing to know about this is that this was filed by an individual investor, so just a person that happens to hold at least one share of Tesla. This was not an action that was done by the SEC, very clearly. Nevertheless, here is how CNBC reported on this this morning. Now, intraday, there's a report uh, that Elon Musk, the uh, CEO and the Tesla board, are being sued for tweeting in violation of SEC, uh, the SEC deal that that, uh, Mr. Musk and the Tesla board had made uh, with uh, with the SEC. Presumably the suit would be from the SEC, but we're waiting for confirmation on this and for more details that we can find. So, wow, I, I found that pretty shocking that CNBC would make that claim without having the evidence, even if they're saying, hey, we don't know for sure yet. But well, it's probably the SEC. Super disappointing coverage there. I think this was first reported by Bloomberg. Unfortunately, I didn't see the Bloomberg report until it had already been updated. So I'm not sure exactly what that first Bloomberg report had. Maybe that was part of the issue. But yes, nothing to do here with the SEC except for the person claiming that Elon Musk violated his agreement with the SEC, an agreement that we have spent a lot of time talking about if you've been a long-time listener. In fact, you may even remember that the SEC itself has already been down this road since that original settlement. They tried to hold Musk in contempt of that settlement at one point. They got asked by the judge to put their reasonable pants on, along with Elon Musk at the same time, And they came up with a more specific settlement that had a number of different things that would need pre-approval if Elon were to tweet about them. So in this new investor lawsuit, it looks like you need a Bloomberg Law subscription to read the entire thing. I'm sure it's available somewhere else, but from what I can see, they highlight Elon Musk's tweet in May 2020, where he said Tesla stock price is too high, in my opinion, saying that that tweet alone, quote, destroyed almost $14 billion of Tesla's market capitalization in a single day, end quote. Okay, cool, the stock dropped 10%, certainly not the first time we've seen that, and then the next trading day, it was up 8.5%, so the net loss between those two trading days was $4 per share. Oh, and the share price at that time, $140, now $693. So, yeah, I don't know that that's a really valid case for causing shareholder damage. Also, as it relates to the SEC settlement, Elon tweeting his thoughts about the stock price is not in any way a violation of the settlement agreement with the SEC. We talked about that that very day. If you want to go back and listen to that episode, if investors thought it was or still think it is, that's their own fault. Generally, the list here is Tesla's financial condition, mergers, production sales delivery numbers, new business lines, changes in the status of Tesla's credit facilities, their securities, non-public legal or regulatory filings, anything that would require an 8K filing, or any other topic that Tesla or a majority of the board decides needs pre-approval. Sorry, but Elon's thoughts on the stock price don't fall under any of those categories, except maybe that last one, which is a catch-all, but that's up to the board. And I'm pretty sure, since the board is getting sued here, they're probably not going to go against Elon on that one. So I'm not a lawyer, but this isn't the first time we've seen a lawsuit like this from someone that claims to be an investor. So I'm pretty sure anyone who's actually an investor is probably pretty happy with how the stock is done, but not the first time we've seen it. And my expectation here is that 
this goes nowhere. All right, next up here, it's for whatever reason, electric vehicle market share continued to be a heavy topic of discussion today. It was talked about on CNBC. There's an article in the Wall Street Journal about it. And Alex Potter, thankfully, has chimed in now on this as well. Anyway, for whatever reason, CNBC is just really struggling today, but during a call that they had with Hyundai's North American CEO, they displayed a graphic here about electric vehicle market share in North America. They list GM at 27%, Ford at 14%, Toyota at 11 Hyundai at 5%, and Tesla at 2%. Obviously, Tesla has more like 80%, and then in recent months, maybe something like 60%, as we have talked about. Certainly not 2%, so perhaps they just mislabeled this graphic and this is total share, but even that doesn't make sense because GM's market share, total North America, is more like 16%, not 27%, so I have no idea what they're trying to show here, but it seems wrong. Thanks again, CNBC. And then the Wall Street Journal had an article today, or I guess late last night, again talking about Tesla losing electric vehicle market share here to the Ford Mustang Mach-E. So Alex Potter over at Piper Sandler is also starting to get frustrated by this. He issued a note today saying, quote, Seemingly every quarter we receive questions about an apparent downtick in Tesla's market share. These concerns are off the mark. They stem from the company's limited global capacity, as well as Tesla's tendency to batch international shipments. For example, in regions where Tesla lacks a factory, e.g. Europe, the company's registrations spike shortly after imported vehicles arrive at the shipyards. And obviously, if no inbound ships arrive in a given month, Tesla's deliveries will decline. Investors can account for this by examining market share on a trailing three-month basis. Additionally, when scrutinizing market share, it's natural to compare Tesla's volume to all other EV deliveries. But since many brands have yet to begin selling EVs, Tesla's share of EV sales will almost always decline, especially in the United States, whenever competing EVs are launched. But this is meaningless. Tesla's share of overall vehicles is still rising. End quote. Couldn't agree more. Thank you, Alex, for chiming in with that. All right, next up here, we've got some news on Tesla insurance. I think this was spotted by Drive Tesla Canada today, even though this was first reported by the S&P Global back on February 18th, and I think everyone just didn't see it then, myself included, but Tesla has selected an underwriter for Tesla insurance in Illinois, according to a series of rate, rule, and form filings obtained by S&P Global Market Intelligence. So similar news here for Illinois that we had heard for Texas a few weeks back. So Tesla is now taking steps in at least three states and who knows how many more because it took us, you know, a month or so to find this news. Hopefully we'll get an update on Tesla insurance on Tesla's Q1 call. All right, next up here, some more mixed information coming out of India. CNBC TV India had reported that Tesla and India's largest integrated power company, Tata Power, had been in discussions about charging infrastructure in India. And this gets a little bit confusing because Tata Power is a part of Tata Group, which has Tata Motor, who owns Jaguar Land Rover. So a lot of ties there, I'm sure, but this is a separate business unit. Anyway, Tata Power came out today and said that the report was factually incorrect. Now that does still leave some room for interpretation. Could get some of the facts wrong, but still be on the right track. So we'll just have to wait and see if anything develops there. All right, last couple of quick things for today. First on the Plaid Plus, so I asked for comments yesterday. Most people that had ordered said that they have not received any sort of update on their delivery timeline yet. So that's no guarantee that things aren't delayed. A lot of times this takes a little bit of time for Tesla to work through and communicate, but it doesn't sound like anyone has heard any direct changes yet. And then lastly here on FSD, Omar's this evening tweeted that 1,000 new testers may get FSD beta soon, like today or this weekend. So obviously speculative there, but figured no better way to head in the weekend than some FSD speculation. So with that, we'll wrap it up for today. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and sign up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you on Monday for the March 15th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.